sight is significant to our perception of reality, both in our surroundings and in the images we are exposed to. The impact of images on our collective view and our own memory has never been greater than it is now. The vast majority of public art is created to be experienced by sight. What would your place in society feel like if you couldn't see? Would you visit exhibitions? What would the view from a mountaintop or a tall building mean to you? An image is not something that exists entirely on its own. In many ways, it is created in the mind of the viewer and interpreted by the viewer's personal experience. To have an image described to you by another person is to get that other person's view. And that's exactly what happens when we describe an image to a person with little or no sight. People have tried to address this by making tactile images, images that can be felt rather than seen. But what tactile images have in common is that they very seldom show the whole image. They only show part of the image, what you might call the descriptive part. To truly experience an image, one has to get a sense of the image atmosphere, which very often lies within the light of the image. Tactile images, what they have in common, whether they are 3D, 2D line art, or low-profile bas relief, is that they only show part of the image, as I said. I was wondering, would there be a way to change this? Would it be a way to find or create tactile images that you can feel the light with your hands? Imagine being blind and being able to truly experience for yourself iconic images like photographs of the first man on the moon or paintings by Rembrandt. I wanted to find a way to make tactile photographs that would give both an intellectual and emotional experience, combining the descriptive and atmospheric elements. Because I knew if that could be done with photography, the same method would be applicable to other complex images, like paintings. So in 2011, I started the project Tactile Photography. The idea for the project came from a meeting I had with a group of people with deaf blindness. Hearing these people talk about their lives made me realize how much we have in common and yet how much they are excluded from. The meeting gave me a strong urge to try to contribute to make these people more included in society. In cooperation with the Swedish Association for the Deaf Blind, I started to explore new possibilities. Through the project, we worked with a team of deaf blind partners who gave us input, took photographs, and tested our tactile prototypes. Together with printing experts, we tried a variety of printing techniques, such as 3D, UV inkjet, Braille. We even explored interactive paper very interesting techniques with lots of possibilities, but none of them suited our three main goals. Our first goal was that the tactile image should be both visual and tactile, so that everyone can share experience from the same physical image. The second goal was that the process should be as automatic as possible, making it scalable and affordable. And our third goal was that the result should not only show the content as form, but also give an emotional experience. So in the end, we found a technique that served all three goals, a technique that etches textures onto layers of transparent surfaces that can be placed on top of a visual image. With this, we can create visual images with tactile elements of form, depth, and even light. Light is atmosphere. The tactile photographs has a surface with a structure where smooth 
corresponds to lighter and rough corresponds to darker. When one of our deafblind partners explored a tactile photograph taken by a deafblind photographer, he, uh, he examined part of the image that was the ocean, saying, ah, oh, yeah, here is the ocean. Ah, oh, this makes me want to swim in the ocean. Then we knew we had a method that worked. And later, when we exhibit the tactile photographs in Stockholm for the first time, one of the visitors, a woman in her 40s, totally blind since birth, understood for the first time in her life when examining a photograph taken from under a bridge, what a gloomy atmosphere in a dark area actually means. To, make, to help her understand what sighted people refer to and thereby be more included in society. That made us proud. And there were other, less obvious, unexpected discoveries that revealed insight into the way we create images. Some blind people were confused when examining Im uh, objects that were cropped by the frame of the picture, saying things like, why are his legs so short? Or objects that were tilted, like buildings shot from unusual angles. Things that sighted people take for granted, but are actually artifacts of visual representation. The tactile photographs enables shared experience and new discussions between people with and without sight. People would say things like, don't you just love the way the light falls on the ocean? And yeah, but how gloomy that place under the bridge feels. And they also bring out the less obvious benefits. Seeing what is in front of you as you enter a room or a building is an open invitation for you to enter. Now a view can be photographed, translated into tactile photographs, so that also people without sight can feel invited and take part of experiences that sighted people take for granted. It's very hard for people with sight to understand the reality of being blind. One of our deafblind photographers, Rolf, totally blind since birth, he was once asked if he sees only black. Black, he replied, no, I don't see black. I see nothing. Nothing. Imagine the world without any visual reference. And speaking of visualization, I would like to do an experiment, not a dangerous one with you. I want all of you to close your eyes and visualize the photograph I'm about to describe to you now. Okay? Keep your eyes closed and visualize this photograph of a lake beneath a mountain. The photograph is shot on a cloudy day. There is mist covering the top of the mountain. Along the mountainside, there are deep lines, traces from the latest, latest ice age. The lake is in the lower right of the picture. And to the far right, just above the lake, there is a little cottage. The lower left part of the image, there are grass close to the camera. So now you have an image in your mind an image that probably changed as I gave you input about the content. I'm pretty sure none of you visualize the actual image I have described. Open your eyes. Is this what you visualized? Being blind and not visualizing what is actually described to you, that is not negative in itself but it makes it hard to join in conversations that, that refer to the visual world. Tactile photographs makes these conversations possible. But the tactile photographs are not only useful for people without sight. They can also be useful for people with cognitive difficulties. It's so much easier to concentrate on something you feel than on something you see. And they can also be used as an educational tool for children. 
tactile images catch attention and invites you to explore them, which makes it fun to learn about art, art theory, artists, and so on. Being weatherproof, the tactile photographs can be displayed outdoors as public signs, panoramic views, signs for objects or buildings, or just plain art. Another advantage is the fact that they are analog. They will not become incompatible in six months. They don't even require updates. They just work. But the big surprise for us was how these tactile photographs gives everyone a new way to experience art and images from a new and deeper perspective. It goes beyond accessibility to give people with sight the opportunity to have a physical experience of art and images through touch. Through touch, we experience emotionally before we make an intellectual valuation of the content. While exploration through sight is mainly done in our intellect. Touch touches you deeper than sight does. Touch goes directly into our sensory system, while sight first goes through an associative and analytical process. Touch is communication beyond the mind. We all have tactile memories. For instance, I can remember the cloth on our couch when I was a little boy, or how the surface on the handle of my first knife felt. Touch gives us emotional experiences that go much deeper than experiences through sight, just as with smell. So by adding this new dimension of touch to visual images, we create a way for everyone to share the same experience. And at the same time, we give everyone a way to experience art and images more deeply and more directly. We began with an effort to help share our world of images with people who cannot see them directly. And in the end, we found a way that gives us all a more emotional connection to these images. Thank you. Thank you.